students. Last class uh, we talked about uh, different points of the center of mass. The first point was how the center of mass move. The second point was how the center of mass change its velocity. The third point was to calculate the position of the center of mass. In general, in this class we will discuss different bodies to calculate the center of mass of different objects. For the sake of simplicity, let us take a ring radius of the ring let it be r mass of the ring you can assume m how to find the center of mass of the ring needless to mention the ring is uniform having uniform mass distribution. To calculate the center of mass of the ring, we have to take the origin of the coordinate system, this is x axis, this is y axis. For the sake of mathematical simplicity, I have taken this point as the origin. The formula for the center of mass position of a system of particle can be given as of a system of particle is given as yc equal to mi yi sum of the product of these two often the total mass of the system. This formula is valid for discrete mass distribution. Just like several point masses, several particles, they do not touch each other. Mass m1, mass m2, mass m3 and so on. They are having the y positions, y1, y2, y3 and so on up to yn the y coordinate of the center of mass of this discrete mass distribution can be calculated by this formula. But here the ring is not discrete mass distribution, the ring is a continuous mass distribution. It is the case of clear cut case of continuous mass distribution. You cannot distinguish one point, one particle of the ring from the other particle. They are continuously arranged. Therefore, this ring is a continuous mass distribution. For this, we need to develop a formula. Little bit modification of this formula of the central mass for discrete mass distribution gives us the formula of the center mass for continuous mass distribution. Just look at the numerator. In numerator, we have the summation. The summation becomes integration. And this is the mass of ith particle. Mass of ith particle become very small segment of 
this continuous mass distribution and here the y coordinate or the y distance of that small segment or element element y distance summation becomes integration mass of ith particle become the elementary mass of a very small segment of the system of continuous mass distribution and y i become the y coordinate of that element upon total mass of the system we can just write instead of summation we can write integration and this is the mass of ith particle it becomes the mass of the element we have chosen this is some reference reference level so we have developed a formula for center of mass of a continuous mass distribution the x coordinate of the center of mass can also be calculated by following the above formula yc equal to integral ydm upon integral dm similarly xc is equal to integral xdm upon integral dm let us come to the example of the ring in this ring let us take an element whose mass is dm this is the x coordinate of this element this is the y coordinate of the element if you take an element on the opposite side we can call it x coordinate this is the y coordinate since both the elements are symmetrical with respect to their origin along x direction along x axis the center of mass of these two elements will have x coordinate so also the y coordinate due to the symmetry of these two elements with respect to this origin its x coordinate will lie at the origin so by inspection we can write x coordinate of the center of mass of the ring will be zero let us try for the y coordinate well recapitulating the fact with respect to this reference level for any continuous mass distribution let us take an element of mass dm its y coordinate let be y the center of mass of this continuous mass distribution has x coordinate so also y coordinate x coordinate of the center of mass of the system can be given as integral x dm of an integral dm the center of mass of the system its y coordinate can be given as integral y dm of an integral dm if you take z coordinate also we can write z is equal to integral z dm of an integral dm for two dimensional or plate like a laminar structure or any structure linear structure like a rod or the ring 
we can use all this formally. For instance, you take the rod, I will be coming back to the ring. You fix the origin at the end point, any one of the end. Let us fix the origin here. You take a small segment, elementary segment dm at a distance of x from the origin and the length of the segment let it be dx. We can use this formula. This is called linear or one dimensional. This is a rod. If the rod is uniform, it may also be non-uniform. For the sake of simplicity, let us take the uniform rod. The y coordinate of the center of mass will be 0 because the rod is entirely lying on x axis and the x coordinate of the center of mass can be written by using this formula integral x dm of an integral dm. Since it is uniform, dm can be written as a constant which is known as linear mass density into the length of the segment. Next step, we can substitute the value of dm as lambda dx and x ranges from 0 to L. If we assume L is the length of the rod 0 to L 0 to L and this will give us L by 2. This gives us the idea that for any uniform rod, the center of mass lies at its geometrical center. The center of mass of any uniform rod lies at its geometrical center or you can say midpoint of the rod is its center of mass is called the midpoint. You take the rod in this way, if you consider this as the origin, L is the length of the rod, hereafter without doing all the derivation, you can take the geometrical center of the rod and you can call it the center of mass, its coordinates are L by 2 comma 0. Next we will consider the rod as the non-uniform rod and try to calculate its center of mass. Non-uniform rod say its linear mass density varies with respect to the distance as lambda naught lambda equal lambda naught 1 plus suppose x by l. Then how to calculate the center of mass of the rod? Since it is non-uniform, you cannot take its geometrical center as the center of mass. However, following the formula for the center of mass you derived which is given as x equal to integral x dm of an integral dm. Instead of dm we can write lambda dx. In both numerator and denominator and the limits remain the same 
0 to L. If you compare the last problem, we can pull this lambda factor, this linear density out of the integral and cancel in both numerator and denominator because this lambda is a constant quantity because the rod is uniform this means that the linear mass density that is equal to dm by dx is a constant quantity. But in this case you cannot pull lambda out of the integral because the lambda varies linearly with respect to distance. Substituting the values of lambda we can get x into lambda naught 1 plus x by l dx integral 0 to l of 1 lambda naught 1 plus x by l into dx 0 to l. This integration is simple let us evaluate the integral. In this case from both numerator and denominator you pull lambda naught out of the integral because lambda naught here is a constant quantity. So, we are left behind with uh, two terms in numerator integral 0 to L x into 1 plus x by L dx. In denominator integral 0 to L 1 plus x by L the dx. The rest of the thing is very simple x dx that is x square by 2 x square dx that is x cube by 3 into L elements 0 to L here 1 into dx that is uh, integral of dx that is uh, x integral of x at x square by 2 l will be there in the denominator and the limits is 0 to l. So, you can evaluate it if you put l this will be l square by 2 plus l cube by 3 l if you put 0 it will be 0 second term will vanish in both the numerator and denominator x will be l x square will be l square by l square by 2 l and uh, if you put 0 it will be 0. So, just you have to simplify it if you take l square common it will be 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 if you take L common in denominator you will get 1 plus 1 by 2 the LL will be getting cancelled you will get L. So, it will be 3 plus 2 that is 5 5 by 6 L in the numerator and denominator it will be 3 by 2 getting cancelled after that you will get uh, 5 by 9 into L you can recheck. So, this set of problem we can expect be twisted. So, generally when they will ask you to find the center of mass of a rod first of all you have to understand whether the rod is a simple uh, uniform or it is non uniform it is if it is uniform rod uh, you can take the geometrical center of the rod as the center of mass if it is non uniform then you have to follow the process and you cannot pull lambda out of the integral and cancel it following the procedure you can pull this constant lambda naught and uh, following the procedure I think uh, you can get uh, this answer it is 5 by 9 into L. Let us take the case of a ring and calculate its center of mass. For the sake of sim simplicity let us assume that the ring is uniform if it is uniform lambda which is given as dm by dl what is dm 
small element, small segment of the ring, this is dm and this length is dl, this is dm. This segment let us obtain an angle d theta at the center and the position vector of this element with respect to the center of the ring, let us obtain an angle theta with respect to positive x axis. Y coordinate of this element let be y, then you can write the y coordinate of the center of mass of the ring is y c equal to integral y d m of an integral d m. And here we have to convert y and d m in terms of theta y is equal to r sin theta and dm is equal to lambda into dl. Since the ring is uniform, you pull lambda out of the integral and cancel in both numerator and denominator. And we are getting the terms sin theta into dl r is constant take it out of the integral into dl. This dl is a small arc can be written as r into d theta. So, we can substitute the value of d l as r into d theta in both numerator and denominator. Since it is semicircular, ring, this angle theta ranges from 0 to 180 degree. Therefore, the lower limit will be 0, upper limit will be pi radii. Next step we are getting r sin theta integral from 0 to pi and in denominator we are getting the integral d theta from 0 to pi sin theta integration will be minus cos theta. When you put the limits, we are getting minus cos theta from 0 to pi by theta from 0 to pi. Next up we are getting y c is equal to r minus take it out, theta will be pi, putting the upper limit first, cos pi minus cos 0 upon and denominator pi minus 0. Cos pi is how much? Cos pi is equal to minus 1, cos 0 is plus 1 by pi. So, you will get the answer 2 r by pi y c. Since these two quadrants, quadrant 1 and quadrant 2 are symmetrical, the center of mass of the ring has x coordinate which will lie at the origin. So, you need not follow the procedure, logically you can write that for symmetry of the ring with respect to y axis, the x coordinate of the center mass will be 0 and the y coordinate of the center mass will be situated at a distance of 
2 r by pi from the origin along y axis. Sometimes they may ask you to find the center mass of a ring which is not exactly semicircular, they may give you an arc of angle say phi. In this case, you can follow the exact procedure, what is the limit will change. Since uh, this is uh, symmetrical with respect to the y axis, the x coordinate of the center mass of the ring will be 0. We will get the center mass of the ring somewhere here. If this is the origin, this distance will y c and you can calculate by just changing the limits. When you are calculating theta, the lower limit will be different, upper will be different, but using this idea, you can also calculate the center mass of this uh, two state problem or you can say general arc.